Hey everyone. Sorry for the somewhat sparse videos lately. It's been quite a busy year so far, but I'm trying to get back on track. Thanks to all of you who stuck with me regardless of uh, two week silence, but thank you. With that aside, let's get into the story, shall we? Welcome to Whisperwood Stories. Today, we read stories from r slash creepy encounters and r slash let's not meet. Let's begin. Our first story is from Tall Big. Our family may have had a stalker when I was a kid. Okay, so it all started back when my parents were together, and I was only like eight or nine at the time. We lived peacefully in a suburban area. There was barely any crime or any other incidents in the area, so pretty peaceful. It was the time when my parents usually took my phone away from me at night, so I could try to sleep. I had a lot of sleeping issues, even to this day. It's important to know that, at that time, my room was set where my bed was against the back wall, with a clear view of my balcony's window. There was an empty bookshelf, well, almost empty, covering half of the window but I could still see a big area of the window through the cracks of the bookshelf. The bookshelf didn't have any wall behind it, so you could see through it to the other side. The day that the first incident happened, my father had been constructing on our terrace, which was directly under my balcony. And he had also ripped out our old cat safety net from the balcony that stopped them from jumping or falling from the balcony. But he had forgotten to take the ladder down, so you could easily climb to my balcony from there. So that night, I hid my phone under my pillow and tricked my parents I didn't have it on me, and they believed me. I played around or watched YouTube or something until I fell asleep. Sometime after I had fallen asleep, I woke up to a sound and checked my phone. It was about 2 a.m. or so, and I was confused what the noise was. I looked through the holes in my bookshelf, out the window, and I swore I saw movement, until I saw a face directly pressed against my window. I even noticed a faint breath whitening a small area in the window. I got jump scared from it, so I kind of like stumbled a bit. Not much, but enough for the guy to notice that I noticed him. He then quickly climbed the ladders down and presumably ran away. I didn't tell my parents about it at the time, because I thought it might have been my imagination, etc. It was pretty wild when I was a kid. But then two weeks go by, and my parents had taken my phone downstairs for the night. And I tried to fall asleep, but as usual, I couldn't. So I snuck silently and slowly downstairs, and grabbed my phone from the couch and sat down to look at the time. It was around the same time, 2 a.m. Then I looked at the window to our terrace and saw that man's face again pressed against the window. And as I noticed him, he quickly ran away. That time, I did tell my parents, and they were weirded out, but to my knowledge, they didn't do anything about it. After that, every now and then, like once every two weeks, I'd see a man walking back and forth in the front of our house in the road. And sometimes, I'd see how quickly he ran across our front yard into the road. I haven't seen that guy in years, and the appearances didn't last for that long. Only for about five months, and then it slowly stopped. With an active imagination like mine as a kid, I was super scared and shook up about it. And I was always scared to walk around in our own house after dark, when others were asleep. I always thought that I'd turn around to look at a window, 
and there he would be. But luckily, he wasn't anymore. But yeah, I don't know. It was super weird and scary, but nothing really bad happened, or was even stolen or anything. Our second story is from the Beatty Bunch. It could have ended badly. So this happened in 2011, so the exact dialogue may have escaped my memory a bit, but the situation is something I'll never forget. Also, AIM was still pretty active during this time, and so was video chatting. Think tiny chat. This is important for later. I was on an online dating site. I won't say which, because I'll be dragged mercilessly in the comments. And was talking to this guy. I was 31 at the time, he was 28. We talked for about six weeks before I gave him my phone number, and we took it offline to calling, texting for another couple of weeks. Two months after our initial chat, we were texting, and he told me that he was out having a few beers at a bar near my house. He asked what I was doing, and asked if I wanted to come out. But I had a very long day at work, so I didn't feel like going to a bar. I am also not a big drinker. I invited him over to my place, I know, I know. After he finished at the bar, and he accepted. I figured it would be okay since I do keep firearms for protection, and I know how to defend myself if needed. I also had a webcam. I took a shower so I wouldn't smell like a water buffalo on a hot day. The air went out at work. Put on some makeup and got dressed to wait. He then called and said he was outside of my house. I clicked record on my computer's webcam program and turned off my monitor and I went to let him in. It's around 10 p.m. and he comes in and we go back to my bedroom because my living room was being remodeled. We're sitting on the bed chatting for about an hour, talking about everything under the sun. The conversation flowed. He was very handsome and so easy to be comfortable with. We got on the subject of firearms and I showed him mine. About 15 minutes later, he asks for some water. So I go to the kitchen to get him a bottle. When I came back, he said he got a phone call and had to leave. After he left, I looked on my nightstand, where I put the firearm down after showing him, and noticed that it was gone. I looked everywhere for it, thinking I had put it down somewhere else, but nope, not there. I then played back the recording from my webcam program, and sure enough, it shows him grabbing it and putting it in his hoodie. I was terrified at that point. He knew where I lived, he had my firearm, and he left his phone on my bed. Right then his phone rings and I answer it. Come to find out, he's married. His wife was calling him wondering where he was. I told her everything, including the fact that he stole my firearm and I had video evidence and was calling the police on him. Next thing I know, he's banging on my door, my firearm in his hand, asking me for his phone. The conversation went like this. Him. I need my phone. Give me my phone. Me. Not opening the door, but yelling through the window. Take the clip out of my firearm. Empty the chamber. Throw the clip into the bushes. The one in the chamber across the road. And put it on the ground. No. Give me my phone. I'm on the phone with your wife at the moment, and I have you on video stealing from me. I put his wife on speaker. Wife. A whole bunch of expletives. Him. Shocked Pikachu. He runs and gets in his car, and then comes back. I threw your gun in the ditch. 
At this point, I make him empty his pockets, take his pants off, take his hoodie off, and show me that he doesn't have my firearm on him. All the while, his wife is on the phone. I go outside and get in his car, in the driver's seat, and tell him to take me to where he threw my firearm. He proceeds to tell me that I don't know how hard it is for him, being a felon, not being allowed to own a firearm ever because of a mistake he made. The mistake? Domestic violence involving a firearm. We get up the road. He tells me the firearm is there in the ditch. Then, I realize the situation I'm in. I can get out of the car and go get it, leaving him to do whatever to me, if he chose. He was 6'4", 225 pounds, me 5'3", 135 pounds at the time. Or I could make him go get it, taking a chance of him seriously hurting me. I took that chance, since I was on the phone with his wife and my phone with 911. He retrieves my firearm, brings it back to the car, and I drive back to my house and wait on the police. I get out of the car and he gets in the driver's seat. I'm still on the phone with the police. I walk around the back of his car to get his license plate number and he puts his car in reverse, hits me, and takes off. They found him later that evening. He still had the clip and the one in the chamber in his pocket, so now he's enjoying time in prison. So glad I never have to meet this person again. Our last story is from Omega, the Crocs and Sock Stalker. This actually happened recently, and I'm still unsettled about the whole encounter. I decided to drop it over here to get it out of my system. I've had creeps tailgate me or try to grab my attention on the road, and I just ignore them, which always worked. But this guy takes the golden medal. My shift starts at the afternoon, and I was feeling off for most of the day. A beautiful, sunny day, mind you. You know one of those days where you drag yourself out of your bed to adulting? I decided to lift my mood up, and I wore something new that I had. A beautiful, creamy white fox fur vest, and I hit the road. Look like a million bucks? feel like a million bucks, right? Maybe not. I played some piano tracks and hoped that I'll get out of this funk. I just needed something to comfort me, and those two things didn't cut it. While I was driving to work, I decided to grab a drink. An iced, crisp green tea will definitely lift my spirit. There were two branches of a famous coffee shop. You know who, a grinning mermaid who's playing Twister. Ring the bell. I could have gone to the first one with the drive through but they use a pretty crappy tea brand as they ran out of the good stuff. So I had to go to the one that was inside a mall. Anything to feel better, right? I parked my car and I saw a private fleet of black SUVs making it difficult to view the entrance. This is important later. I grabbed a cold bottle of water and headed to the counter. I paid for my drink and got a cherry lollipop cause why not? Waited for my drink and once I got it, started walking out. I had to pass a fountain in the courtyard before I could reach the exit. I slowed my pace as I noticed that I was walking too fast. I felt a bit off but brushed it off. As I passed between the SUVs, a bus shot through quickly. I stopped in shock as I almost walked in its path. This didn't make me realize what was happening as I got distracted and wasn't aware of my surroundings. As I walked further, I had to pass an area where there isn't anyone. It was shaded but still outdoor. 
almost like under a bridge style building, if that makes sense. This was the way to my car. I noticed that I wasn't aware of my surroundings till I heard footsteps on my right. Then I saw a man in my peripheral vision, walking and matching my speed. At first, I thought he was in a uniform, so I assumed he was part of the cleaning staff in the mall. I felt off, but I told myself that I'm being paranoid and overthinking. Next to my car, and on my left side, was a woman with a child, who were getting into their car. This will make sense later. I was sandwiched between my car and hers. I was getting my keys out of my fur vest, and then I had to turn around in order to open my driver door, as I was a bit ahead of it. Once I turned, I saw a man standing. Looked like in his late thirties, skinny, average height. He had a dark blue baseball cap with sunglasses, a gray shirt with some print on it, and black sweatpants. Croc shoes with socks. He was so close that it took me by surprise and I was startled. But being nice and polite is in my blood and so I assumed nothing. The first thing that he said was, why are you afraid? I told him that I wasn't and asked him what he wanted. Is your car for sale? He said while grinning. I said no. Then he started to ask about how my date was going and stuff along those lines. The heck, I don't even know you. Alarm bells were ringing in my head. I smiled as to not escalate the situation. I know I had to do something. He was blocking my way to the mall entrance. And if I decided to go the other way, which is a pretty large shaded parking lot with a few people here and there. It was nice to meet you, but I gotta leave, I said while smiling. Give me your phone number, he said bluntly. I just repeated the same phrase and took a step closer to my door, as I didn't want to show him that I was afraid. I was pooping bricks at that moment. Then he said something that made me want to crawl out of my skin. Give me your phone number so I don't have to chase you around in my car. At this moment, I knew I had to move fast, so I opened my door and ignored him. He kept talking, and I wasn't sure what he was saying as it felt muffled. My anxiety was higher than the tip of Mount Everest now and I was hit with this realization that even in public spaces and in broad daylight with people around, you can lose your sense of safety in a split of second. I closed my door quickly and locked it. My fingers felt weak, but I managed to turn on the car. He kept knocking on my window. He was so insistent. I put my car in reverse mode, but I couldn't back out. The woman was halfway getting out of her parking spot, thus forcing me to wait. He kept knocking pretty hard and saying stuff. At that moment, I honestly couldn't hear him. All I wanted was to nope out of there. I was so afraid and just baffled. I had to look at the window to see when the road will get clear so I can back out while he was standing in front of my window, rapidly knocking on it. I avoided making eye contact with him. Once the road was clear, I hit the gas pedal and sped off. I drove to random places with my eyes fixed on the rearview mirror to make sure he wasn't following me. It was so hard to breathe, as my chest felt so heavy and my heart was beating out of my chest. I was glad he wasn't there. This creep followed me all around the mall and waited for the right moment I was alone and threatened me to give him my phone number and was totally unaware of how much of a creep he was. My therapist will definitely hear about this. To the guy with a baseball cap and Crocs with socks, let's not ever, ever meet again.
Thank you for listening to Whisperwood Stories. If you enjoyed, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe down below. Do you have a story that you'd like me to read here? Consider commenting or sending it to whisperwoodsubmissions at gmail.com. The stories in this video were read with their author's permissions. Thank you again for listening, and be sure to check out the original Reddit posts. Don't let the shadows get too close.